So today I want to talk briefly about this uh, little Bluetooth module here. Uh, it's a Bluetooth audio module and the chip on it is the CSR A64215. Uh, it can be powered from a uh, 12 volt supply which is useful for me because I'm running this off uh, lead acid batteries. Uh, it has an input, uh, an auxiliary input and an output. Um, it's a great little uh, little board. The only downside that I would say is that for some unknown reason the left and right channels are switched around on the Bluetooth output compared to the auxiliary output, which means you have to sort of uh, mess about with the cables a little bit um, and swap them over. Basically, if you wire this up correctly, um, the Bluetooth module will switch the left and right channels over, whereas the aux um, in will keep the left and right channels the right way around. So the way I tend to deal with this is I swap the wires over uh, in the cable coming into the aux input so that it's backwards, and then I swap over the output from this again um, so that they're both the correct way around. Bit of a bit of a screw up really, but um, not too not the end of the world, and uh, something you can actually deal with. Uh, I got this uh, for about nine pounds, I think, from AliExpress, uh, and I bought quite a few of those. And I will uh, put a link in the description if you want to get hold of one of these. Now, one of the reasons I want to make this video today is to show you how to change the name of this Bluetooth device. Um, I actually make little boom boxes, and it just looks a little bit better if we can change the name to something a little bit more friendly. I think by default this is called something like Hi-Fi, but we're going to change that. Um, it does involve a little bit of uh, fairly precise soldering. You can see the size of the, uh, the little contacts on the side of the chip here. We need to solder a few wires onto these little connectors around the side there. So it can be a little bit fiddly. I'm going to give it a go. I might not be able to do it on camera because I'm trying to reach around the, uh, the camera at the same time here. But um, let's, let's, uh, let's see how that goes. Now, in order to program this chip, uh, we need a USB SPI um, device, something like this. Uh, I got this one from eBay. I think it was about eight or nine pounds. And again, I'll put a link in the description here to the one that I bought. Um, if you buy one of these, uh, just be a little bit careful. They all seem to have a slightly different pinout. Um, so I've actually written uh, the pinout here on the back of mine, but um, don't necessarily follow this. Make sure that you follow the instructions that comes with your programmer, because uh, they are all very slightly different. Uh, basically, it's normal SPI communications. We've also got a 3.3 volt and a 1.8 volt uh, connection there as well. And um, well, I'm going to put a schematic up on the screen now of the uh, Bluetooth board so we can see where these contacts actually need to be connected to. So we need to make seven connections in total. Uh, starting on the left hand side there, we've got the SPI PCM. That's actually SPI enabled, so that needs to be pulled high. Um, so we normally connect that to the 1.8 volt uh, line on the programmer via a 10K resistor. That'll keep it pulled high. That means we can actually read and write to the uh, to the chip itself. Uh, we also need to connect uh, ground and 3.3 uh, volts. Uh, ground goes to ground, 3.3 volts goes to VBAT. And then we need to connect the communication lines. So we've got uh, MOSI, CLOCK, CSB, and MISO, and they all need to be connected to the appropriate pins on the programmer. Again, check the actual pinout for your program. It might be different to the one I've got, um, but I've tried a couple and they all seem to work pretty much exactly the same. So the way I'm going to connect these uh, contacts up is by using some stranded copper cable here. It's going to strip the insulation off that and uh, solder each strand uh, to one of those contacts. Uh, this is going to be a little bit fiddly. So in order to make attaching these a little bit easier, uh, first I'm just going to tin the ends of um, each bit, one of these bits of wire here. It's kind of tricky to do with the camera in the way here. Got a very small, uh, well, got a one millimeter tip here on the soldering iron. That's just to make it a little bit easier in a few minutes' time. And we actually wire it up. And um, okay, so there's now solder on the end of all of those wires. And uh, now we're going to try and attach them to the um, to the chip itself. Okay, so that's all the uh, the wires soldered on. Sorry, I didn't do that on camera. My soldering skills are uh, not quite good enough to, uh, to be able to solder and have the camera in the way at the same time. They are all attached a little bit fiddly. Uh, with a small enough soldering iron tip, it is uh, fairly straightforward to do. I'm just going to attach this resistor here to the 1V8 line. Okay, uh, and that's the one that's going to keep the, uh, the SPI line the SPI communication active the whole time as SPI enabled. For some reason, it's it's uh, listed as SPI PCM on this particular board, uh, but it is the SPI uh, enable line. Okay, there's all the leads hooked up, um, as shown in the diagram that I showed you earlier. If yours looks a complete mess like this, looks like a bit of a rat's nest, it's probably a good idea to uh, use the continuity mode on your multimeter just to make sure that none of those things are shorted before you actually uh, you plug this in. So I'm just going to check that none of these are actually shorted.
And there is a short there, unfortunately, so I'll have to sort that one in a second. And the rest of those seem okay. Okay, so all the wires are hooked up. Uh, we checked for shorts, it all looks okay. So I've got to plug in the programmer now. Fingers crossed, Let's see what happens. Okay, that blue light coming on is a good sign. It means that uh, power is actually getting into the chip. Uh, what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to launch PS Tools, which is part of the uh, the Bluetooth suite. Now, there's a link to the uh, installer in the description of the video here. So if you install that, and the thing we need to use is PS Tools. So let's switch over to the uh, the computer here, and we'll do the rest of it through the laptop. Now the device is plugged in, and we have Bluetooth suite installed. Uh, we're going to load PS Tool. And we can actually use this to uh, to edit some of the, the config of this uh, Bluetooth module. So it's recognized our SPI programmer, just here. So let's go OK. Good. And if everything's fine, it should read all the details from that. Now, before we do anything else, it is entirely possible to completely brick uh, the Bluetooth module by messing about with these, uh, these settings. So in general, it's a good idea to um, record a backup, basically a dump, first of all. Um, so let's do that. Go to file and then dump. Let's just check out the desktop for now. This means that even if you do uh, mess up some of the settings and it doesn't work quite how it used to, uh, you should still be able to, uh, to restore it from this. Uh, I have heard that it is possible to brick it entirely where you can't recover it again, but I haven't managed to do that so far. So the main thing we wanted to change here was the name. So go up to the filter box, top, type in name. And we're looking for the local device's uh, user-friendly name. So uh, this, I said before that maybe it was called Hi-Fi. This one seems to be called BT Audio. So we can change that to whatever we want. So let's call it, I don't know, test name. We hit set. And, uh, and that should be done. So an easy way to check if that's the case is if we hit reconnect. And now we search for name, you can see it comes up test name just here. Now, just to make absolutely sure on that, what I'm going to do is unplug the uh, SPI programmer. Let's close this. Okay, and then we're going to reconnect to it again. And again, if we go to name just up here, We can see that it's now set to uh, to test name. Okay, just to finish this off, then let's have a quick look. Make sure we can actually uh, find this uh, this device. So I'm just turning Bluetooth on now. Uh, let's connect a new device, and uh, there we go. There's test name. That's the uh, the device name we set earlier. Make sure we can actually connect to it. And we can, and that's working fine. And you can see uh, you get the Aptex uh, connection there as well uh, for much higher quality streaming. So uh, that's it. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, the only thing we're left to do is to desolder all of those little wires that you connected, and uh, you've successfully changed the name of, uh, of your Bluetooth module. If you have any questions, uh, please do give me a shout in the comments below. Thank you very much.